On the 26th day of October, Halloween gave to me 26 phone booth lunches, 25 cotton candy cocoons, 24 space vampire snogging, 23 bloody canoes, 22 pull corpses, 21 groovy ashes, 20 Japanese giallos, 19 kung fu vampires, 18 haunted marches, 17 eternal lonelinesses, 16 cursed VHS tapes, 15 spectral snapshots, 14 mothers murdering, 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Betty's baking, 10 Bryce's burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 Goldwyn shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey there, folks. Welcome to yet another episode of the 31 Days of Halloween. We are so close to the end, uh, which I am I am so sad about. Uh, it is going to be uh, a little depressing to hang up my 31 Days of Halloween spurs after all of this is done. But uh, it has been quite a journey of movies, and we are almost in the final stretch before we get to the last uh, four sort of movies around a theme. We are going to be talking about uh, a handful of movies that are a little weird, like we talked about Killer Clowns yesterday, and somewhat keeping in the idea of terror from space, uh, today we are talking about The Blob, the the remake of The Blob, not the Steve McQueen original, uh, which is a fine film uh, on its own, but it's not this movie. And this uh, version of The Blob from 1988, one of those movies that I feel like doesn't get mentioned in the, you know, pantheon of great remakes, even though it is definitely a great remake. Uh, It is a a terrific film. And uh, directed by Chuck Russell, who uh, has directed, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and he did The Mask, and, you know, those are probably the highlights. He's done plenty of other stuff. Uh, I think he's going to be the guy remaking Witchboard, uh, which is kind of fine by me. You know, if, if you can remake the blob and make it interesting, uh, I'm totally good with uh, him trying to hand at Witchboard. Interestingly, also, the script is written by Chuck Russell and a, a young Frank Darabont, who, of course, would go on to do, you know, uh, The Green Mile and The Mist and, you know, a host of those uh, King adaptations, along with a a number of other films. But uh, Darabont is, uh, you know, a a master filmmaker. Shawshank is probably his his masterpiece. And, you know, he wrote Elm Street 3 as well. So he and Chuck Russell clearly enjoyed working together, clearly, uh, you know, had a vibe. And... Uh, I think it shows in this version of The Blob, which, um, you know, takes advantage of the effects available at the time. And, you know, I was thinking about it as I was watching it. If this movie were remade today, they would do it all with CGI and it would look kind of like trash. And that's why I'm glad this movie exists in 88. I'm sure at some point somebody will remake The Blob again and it it will be all computer generated and it will be a real bummer. But it's the practical effects that they that makes this movie so special. You know, like it, it's got a, a good enough plot. And of the plot, of course, of the movie is that, hey, this meteor lands, uh, inside is The Blob, it gets on this you know a crazy ralph guy uh gets on his hand and he gets taken to the hospital uh by kevin dillon who is sort of the you know bad boy with a heart of gold in this film uh along with shawnee smith and her boyfriend and uh shawnee smith is the good girl like it's a real love uh from opposite sides of the tracks kind of thing between those two and you know the the Crazy Ralph Kai ends up being consumed by the blob along with Shawnee Smith's boyfriend in one of the more iconic moments of the film is him, you know, reaching out to uh, to get help from her while covered by the blob. And you see, you know, the the fact that he's being digested as this is going down. And that's the thing about 
this version of the blob is that it's pretty gory and you know you see people getting tugged down drains and you know split in half as they're you know pulled through bookcases uh i'm thinking of the uh briggs the deputy character that happens to him um and that's before you get to the the stuff where you actually see the blob or the effects of the blob's digestion on these bodies uh up to and including a kid you see a kid in this movie half digested by the blob as he's screaming for help and it's one of the more like shocking moments in the film where you're like oh my god this this blob don't care he doesn't care about kids uh probably wrong to call the blob a he it's more of an it i'm sure uh, but yeah it's it's you know that kind of thing is really shocking uh, by modern standards, you just don't see a lot of kids being digested by space creatures in movies. And so when it happens, it kind of stands out. Uh, so, you know, there's that. There's the incredible effects work, which is is truly innovative at the time. Like, it, it, there's a lot of reversal shots. You can, you can kind of tell that part of it. But it's really good. Uh, and, and remain so like there, there's some compositing that's done where you're like, eh, I don't know that this is the best, you know, composite shot I've ever seen. Some of the, especially when you see, you know, sort of the crowd running from the bigger blob later on, uh, and, and the tentacular nature of the blob as it brings down a, a pseudopod, on top of someone, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, ah, this is all right. Um, but everything else about it is just so, you know, sh not, not just shocking, but although there is, there are definitely moments of like, oh my God. Um, but everything else about it is so like creative and confident and, and smart and, and fun, uh, that you can kind of forgive the, you know, the occasional weak composite shot. Um, but yeah, so to continue with the idea of the story of this, there is this, uh, you know, the blob gets loose, starts eating people, and, you know, it's up to Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith to kind of bring attention to the fact that the blob is on the loose and and the nature of it, because no one really believes, including a great sheriff by uh, played by Grace Demon, uh, not Grace, I'm sorry, Jeffrey Demon, and uh, who's you know a Frank Darabont regular, and I, his character I love really like in this movie because he's the sheriff and he gives Kevin Dillon kind of a hard time, but also he doesn't seem to be a bad guy, and more interestingly. He has a crush on the lady who runs the local diner, and there's this sort of unspoken plot uh, where you kind of understand, you know, like this relationship between uh, the, the Jeffrey Demon and the and this diner owner, and you kind of want to see more of it, but of course. Uh, you know, they get eaten by the blob before any of that can happen. And and maybe the best moment of the movie is when the, the diner owner is in a phone booth trying to hide from the blob and is calling the police station to be like, hey, where's the sheriff? And sure enough, the sheriff shows up outside the phone booth being mostly digested by the blob. And then it just bursts into this phone booth. And it, it's violent and that's another thing that's really cool about like when the blob builds up behind a door or something and finally busts through and it just spills out uh you know that that stuff looks really good as well um but yeah yeah, yeah. so uh you know uh, finally the 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 feds show up a a strike team of uh federales show up to kind of deal with the situation and you learn that hey maybe this meteor from space is a little more than we think it is um and and might not be as extraterrestrial as we once thought and it, it's a nice little twist in the movie i will say the biggest downside of the movie i think is once they show up and it becomes a little bit more predictable 
in the sense that like, oh, I know where this is headed and I know how the characters are going to react to all this stuff. And maybe it's just because I've seen this movie a thousand times. But um, the, the front end of the movie, everything up to the point where, uh, the you know, the blob kind of goes on its first rampage through the diner and you see the uh, the priest character kind of exploring and, and putting the, the piece of the blob in the jar and that kind of thing. Um, and then the end of the movie, I think, is fantastic. Uh, the way that they kill the blob is perhaps a little convenient, but I think it works because both Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith are both kind of contributing to that. And it's not like Shawnee Smith in this movie is not just a damsel in distress. She is very, very active in, in uh, containing the blob and destroying the blob. And uh, so I think that really works. Um, it just it d- drags ever so slightly for me in one part of the movie. But it's a minor complaint, you know? Like, my, my list of complaints with this movie are like, yes, it kind of drags in the, in the end of the second act. Um, some of the composite work isn't great. And then that's it. And everything else about the movie is fantastic. Uh, so it's a, a real crowd pleaser for me. And if you've never seen the 88 blob, uh, you absolutely owe it to yourself. I'm, I'm sure everyone listening to this has, but it, it does strike me as strange that it is a movie that doesn't get talked about that much. Um, you know, maybe it does. Maybe I'm just, I don't have my ear to the, the ground like, uh, I once did, but you know, for a movie that's 34 years old at this point, Um, Kevin Dillon maybe doesn't make the most engaging of stars, uh, of lead actors, but he's kind of right for this part, you know, as the sort of, you know, thug, the, the small town thug, who's really not a bad guy. He's just, you know, kind of a doof, um, more than anything. And I, so even that complaint, I, you know, doesn't hold that much water with me. I, I just don't know why people aren't always like... Oh, one of one of the great remakes up there with, you know, the thing, and uh, you know, whatever your list, uh, invasion of the body snatchers, that kind of thing. The Blob should be in that list because it takes its initial premise of here's this goopy thing uh, from space that just a bunch of jelly that we're gonna use miniatures on, and there's plenty of miniature work in in Blob eighty eight, but it looks so good. Um, yeah, it, it truly is one of one of the best remakes out there. Uh, all right, well, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to say too much more about it. Uh, it it's got great effects work. It, it's got a, a smart script um, that has some nice turns. Like when the Federales do show up, it's like, oh, okay, well, we're taking this, the, the reason for the blob in a slightly different direction. Um, there, a lot of the small town characters have, you know, the, enough backstory that you're, you're, behind them or understand them even the boyfriend of shawnee smith who gets eaten and is sort of not really a romantic rival of of kevin dillon but you know you kind of understand that he's not a terrible guy and there's uh they actually put to screen a variation of the old gag about you know buying the condoms from the uh from the pharmacist who turns out to be the father of the girl and all that stuff like it's just it's just a good time like it's a movie that sets out to have fun and does so and and some of the effects work is absolutely grisly and i was kind of uh joking with uh my lady friend about how this movie puts being eaten alive by a space creature on my top 20 list of ways i don't want to die because it seems like a terrible way to go it seems like it hurts a lot to be you know digested all at once by something uh, so yeah, it's a, a tremendous film. Um, anyway, that'll do it. Coming up tomorrow, we've got a much weirder one, and uh, I think that'll be fun to to kind of chit chat about. But uh, be sure you check out the Blob if you haven't seen it in a while. It's it's just truly one of the great horror remakes, one of the the great '80s horror films, uh, written and directed by very talented people, and and with some of the best effects work that you're likely to see in a movie called the blob. Uh, and, and I, I do, I rue the day when they decide to get around to remaking this, cause it's all going to be CGI and it's not going to look nearly as good as this does. 
Uh, this, I think, holds up really, really well in most cases, um, including one uh, where there is a, a date rape about to happen and the blob stops it. I mean, the blob stops everything and, and both the date raper and the date rapee uh, meet the same fate, which is probably not ideal. But, you know, that's the nature of the blob. The blob uh, meets out justice equally to all, to the, the good and the bad alike. Um, but yeah, that's a weird scene. It's kind of, kind of, uh, it's heading to a creepy place and then it turns into, you know, oh, okay, everybody's going to die. Got it. Um, and there is this apocalypse kind of feel to the movie of like, oh, we got to stop this thing or it's just going to eat everyone and everything. And eventually the earth will just be, you know, the blob plus rock. Um, <laughs> at any rate, oh, oh, one last thing. One, one of my favorite uh, moments in the movie that uh, I, I just have to, you know, spew forth at this point. I love it when they're going through the sewers, uh, Shawnee Smith and the two kids, and there's some rats on, uh, you know, floating debris, and uh, Shawnee Smith is like, ugh, gross rats, and she tells one of the kids, hey, watch out for those rats, and the kid just goes, what rats? And you realize that the blob is in the water with them because it ate the rat, Oh, so good. So good. Uh, check out the blob. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening to day 26 of the 31 days of Halloween. Day 27 will be uh, here tomorrow uh, because of the nature of time moving in a linear fashion for all of us uh, or most of us if you're not a Vonnegut character. And <laughs> um, I'm excited. Like, we've only got a few days left. So I'm really enjoying it. The weather has turned into perfect fall weather. It is It is terrific. The jack-o'-lanterns are carved. The the uh, uh, cemetery in front of the house has been constructed. The zombies are about to be added. Uh, so I will uh, send everyone some pictures in the Discord of that. So uh, speaking of, you can uh, go to legionpodcasts.com and you can click on this here post uh, for this episode or any of the episodes of the 31 days of Halloween, where you can find all the social media connections for Legion podcasts. And if you want to, uh, chit chat with me about any of these movies, uh, hop over to the discord server. That's where I am most of the time. Uh, and you can find me there. Please be sure you're subscribing to, uh, both the Legion podcast podcast feed and, uh, the dark parade, which is where you will find all of the horror stuff. What I do. Uh, and, uh, on the Legion podcast feed, you'll also find, you know, pick six movies and duck and a bow come correct and a bunch of other stuff I do along with a number of terrific shows. So, uh, be sure you are checking that out. And, uh, that is it for me today. Be spooky out there. Uh, boy, we only have a few more days to do it before being spooky means that you're going to get the authorities called because you're being spooky around Thanksgiving and that's always suspicious. So... <laughs> Uh, be spooky out there while you can get away with it in a legal setting. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow to, with another movie on the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then.